Hello. Um, <clears throat> let's see how long I can go without my roommate popping in and uh, making me shut up because I want to babble here. Uh, I want to be available to you guys to spread my wisdom, my limited wisdom on various artistic subjects. So I hope. I can help in any way, shape, or form. I'm no, by no means an expert. My anatomy needs tons of work and things, but I hope I can at least offer you a new perspective on things if it will help. Um, so I have had a couple questions. I, I'm, I was pleased that I had a few responses. Um, I think the one I'm going to deal with first is... Uh, Let's see, how would we word this? Um, just like cartoon body types and things. And this is something I've obviously had a lot of fun with. Um, see, where to start? Um, I don't know how artistically experienced you lot are, and I'm guessing there's probably. Um, a spectrum out there of people who are various places in their drawing. Um, so forgive me if I reiterate something that seems very basic. Um, sometimes the basics, I mean, there's a reason that they teach you the basics, and it's only been now that I'm really starting to get that. So I guess we'll start with, um, I know you saw, you all saw the rectangles video, hopefully if you didn't you can see it on my YouTube, um, I'll link you, just ask me, uh, <laughs> um, and that's kind of, that was kind of a really, really simplified, you know, version of what I, I kind of employ whenever I draw, because, um, whenever you, most art books, most art classes, most um, methodologies will teach you that you need to be drawing shapes. You need to learn how to draw your... This is going to look really crappy, but most of my sketches in this session are probably going to be really, really crappy. But um, They teach you that you need to learn to draw basic shapes like squares, boxes, well, boxes, spheres, cylinders. And when I was a younger artist, um, I used to think this was a lot of BS, and it was really time consuming, and I didn't really think about it, and it's only been recently that I realized that this, knowing what a shape looks like in space, is the key to figuring out how to draw from your imagination or something, because if you can draw, if you know what a cylinder looks like in space, you can learn to draw it at angles and things. You know how to draw a cylinder at angles and you can adapt it to your own purposes so that cylinder can become like an arm and fingers and things like that. All from just knowing your basic shapes you can draw things that have never existed because you know what um, these basic shapes look like from various angles. So I can draw a dragon or something and it'll be convincing in space because the shapes making it up are convincing in space. So yeah. So that's the basic thing. So shapes are like really important. <laughs> And yes, I'm making this up as I go, so sorry if I sound like I'm incoherent bar babbling or something. So, like, another thing that, um, really important to animation and cartooning is alongside the shapes, where, like, if you want a, yeah, like, alongside shapes you have something called a line of action, and this helps. I don't usually directly use this technique, but it's very imp and you know my art actually suffers for it sometimes. It looks stiff sometimes. It's because um, I'm not showing motivation with a line of action and this is kind of a really important 
technique. Um, like, you gotta learn to ex your character has to um, embody, you know, this line of action. And if your line of action isn't um, clear along his anatomy or something, then you might end up with something stiff, something not um, expressing what you want to express it. Um, generally, a line of action, these are terrible examples, um, generally a line of action is going to like run through the body, like um, you have your stick man here. It's generally along his spine, um, and you use it to inflict motion or emotion, or <laughs> like if I were to draw like this, his head might be hanging, and then, um, you go, you think about that line of action. Um, I'm, if you look that up elsewhere, it, it, it's an old, you know, technique, um, I'm sure some of the old greats, like, I mean, Disney probably has something on it, a lot of cartooning resources will have something on it, I, I invite you to look into that, because it's a, it's a good theory, and I'm not sure how great I'm ex at ex explaining it, but, um, It, it, it's roughly the spine, but um, mostly it's, it's the overall. And that's another thing is um, to cartoon it all, you need to draw from life. And I know that the person who asked me this, they say they can draw from life pretty well. So um, I think if you're really good at realism, like tight realism, I would start to try loosening up. Um, I don't know how, if you've done, like, 10 second, uh, gesture sketches, but th those are imperative. Those will help a lot. Like, um, if you go out in the real world and just draw people, like, you just see what they're doing with their lives and sum something up in just a few pen strokes and... Once you know how to draw something really simple, you can start, you know, making it more complicated, like, just generalize things, like, you have your, you know, dumpy person with his, you know, his big feet or whatever. I'm drawing a lot of sad looking people today, I don't know. <laughs> um... Just start finding the essence of gestures, and I think that helps a lot. Like, um, don't get... You have to know anatomy, and it's important. Anatomy is incredibly important, but when you're cartooning, you acknowledge all your, you know, knowledge of anatomy, and then you just kind of have to let it go and see what kinds of... Um, shapes you need to communicate what you're tr trying to communicate within your character. Um, let's see. Let me take a peek here. Body structure. Um, and the thing about cartoons is that it's like infinitely, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with them. There's infinite styles. Um, and this might be kind of off topic, but I, I'm of the firm belief that if you draw something confidently enough, um, it'll look good. Like, uh, you have to be, in anything in life, really, if you're confident and you make it look intentional, people will take it as intentional. So, um... If, when you're having trouble stylizing, don't make it look like you're having trouble. Um, use bold lines. None of these, yeah, here. Uh, maybe I need a bigger brush to express. But um, a lot of times, 
it's all, all it makes the difference between your shaky lines that don't really know what you're doing and then you have your you know bolder like I know exactly what I'm doing and this was entirely intentional kind of lines so confidence is key even if you have no idea what you're doing and your anatomy is full of suck and fail people will accept it if it looks intentional so um look and look like you know what you're doing even if you have no idea what I'm doing that's the basis of well I would say it was the basis of my success but like half my stuff is sketchy and gross but I mean the point remains like um, you'll see those professional scribbles by like Tom Owens or all the other storyboard artists that I mean they're not anatomically sound necessarily or anything, but just because they had such confidence in the swoosh, 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 you know, um, it looks intentional, it looks solid, and it looks good. So that's another thing um, that can really help, you know, tighten up your pictures is looking like you meant for things to be the way they are. Like, um, let me see. I might have some good examples of something. Let me see if I have something. And again, forgive me, I'm just kind of, I thought about this beforehand, but I'm kind of just making it up as I go, so it's probably kind of not very structured. I might do another draft, or answer another question, or, um, I'll, I, I want to try to clarify everything you want to, everything I can. Um, for you, I'm like I said, I'm not an expert, but um, I ha I mean, like this one is kind of a decent example. I don't know crap about foreshortening or anything. Um, if um. And there's some stuff that's intentionally kind of scribbly here, but I just kind of went for it. Um, and I'm like, yeah, this is exactly how it would work. And use bold lines and acted confident in it, even though not necessarily, it's n not right at all. It's not right at all, but it looks, you know, somewhat tight because I was just like, yeah, yeah, this is totally intentional. And that's, that's a huge aspect of cartooning is just like maintaining that like suspension of disbelief like I mean a lot of our how to train your dragon characters their anatomy doesn't make any sense but they're that's the only thing about them that doesn't make any sense like they're depicted in such a naturalistic manner aside from the fact that like you know hiccup has no butt and, you know, people's legs are, like, really tiny. It's the confidence. And, like, it's like I survive on these spindly legs, and I do just fine. And you believe that because you see them, you know, walking around. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So... And we all go through, like, s wow, I'm just, like, jumping around topics. I'm so sorry, but, like, <laughs> this, it's such a broad subject. I don't know. Um, stylizing is every artist's challenge, and I wouldn't try too hard. Like, I woke up one day, and I figured out, oh, my gosh, I've had a style this entire time. And it... It just comes from drawing a lot. I just don't worry about it. Um, I personally developed a lot of mine, obviously, by um, imitating, you know, things I've liked in junk. But um, I mean, obviously, I'm really aware of my own anatomical flaws and crap, um, and the styles anatomical flaws. So but I just kind of go with it, like, um, you just have to develop your own language, I guess I'd say, um, 
And you have to learn to love what comes out of you because it might not look like a style that appeals to you or something, but it's it's you. And that's what's gorgeous about your style is that nobody's going to be able to be quite like you. And you just got to, like I said, you just got to have to do I, you just gotta have to, you just have to develop your own, like, language. Like, I mean, you've seen with me, I, I rely, my style is very heavily dependent on shapes. And I never, I never thought about that until, like, recently, but I love working with shapes in, um, I think about things kind of two-dimensionally, which I guess is, it might not be healthy, but, um, I like, I like curves, I like contours, I like, um, storytelling caricatures of shapes, um, like this one, I mean, you see these black shapes that form, you know, space, I, I don't know, like, shapes of the shadows helping to form things. I, I'm so into stuff like that. Um, like, everything's kind of simplified into, like, I have, you know, these folds and clothes that I always draw, and my hands are really stylized. I can't draw hands with crap. But, <laughs> um, it's just, it's just a language you kind of have to develop for yourself. And, I mean, I, I, ha I tend to be kind of suited toward cartoons, but it shows up in my, like, pseudo-realistic styles, too. Um, is I like to shade in, you know, distinctive shapes. I like to see things in shapes. And that's that's just me. Other people have different ways. And it, it's interesting because, like, I mean, it's just an expression of how our brains are all different, you know? Like, the way we think about things and approach things is all different. Um, the... the Cartooning is such a freeing form, though. Like, you are free to tweak people in any way to tell their story. And, um, so you got, you get to pick, you know, the shapes that you want to emphasize that. Like, you have, you could have, like, a hero guy with, like, these peck sores and... And you just kind of base it vaguely off of human anatomy. Just like, what kind of shape is a hero? What kind of shape is this villain? What kind of shape is courage? What kind of shape is jealousy? And you gotta... You, you get to be cheesy, you get to be stereotypical, or you can break stereotypes and use them that way. Um, like, his arms are more, like here, like his arms are the important part, so his legs aren't. And that's, that's what How to Train Your Dragon does a ton too, like. You've got, you know, this is my the important part of my Viking. And then he's got feet. His feet aren't that important. So. And I, look at my artistic expertise. I, I just, you guys support me in all my endeavors. And clearly this is worthy of praise. Um. Like, what is most important about the character? Like, is it his head? Is it his muscles? Is... Like, cartoons throughout history have kind of developed a, you know, language of tropes for us to kind of use and abuse, as it were. And, I mean, if you've seen a ton of cartoons, you know this. Like, you know, the 
big fat bully or the you know skinny sleazy kid or um the girl there's not enough girl archetypes yet still in uh this kind of thing but uh It's it, it's really a language that I mean you gotta you gotta just love looking at other people's stuff and interpreting other people's stuff and I'm not saying fan art is even a good place to go and that's kind of the path I've taken I'm not in, I'm not strictly proud of that but I do think that um, I've learned quite a lot by you know emulating styles, interpreting styles, um, interpreting other people's stories, um, but if you come into it from like a real realistic perspective then you all power to you because you can you already have the tools to um, if you know the rules, you can break them. Because, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I can sit here and I can talk about, you know, how shapes work for me. And that was, that's a really, a, it was an acquired skill, like, that's not something I was innately born with or anything, like, I learned through trial and error what, um, how to draw shapes in space and what looks convincing, and I'm very slowly learning to foreshorten and be in perspective. I don't challenge myself enough, but, um... It's really just, I mean, drawing is not easy, and it, it's not something that's going to come, like, I mean, I was reading one of the blogs I watch on Tumblr, is like, artist confessions, and some person was all like, oh, being an artist is like climbing a mountain, and when you get to the top, it's a wonderful feeling, and I'm like, what artist ever reaches the top? Like... It's always about, it's perpetually about getting better. I was like, any decent artist is on an escalator going backwards. And you're like, maybe it's going slowly backwards, but you're, you're trying to like, go uphill and it's not always going to be going with the flow. You have to um, fight your own um, insecurities and your own you know, weaknesses and your own lack of motivation and just let yourself draw. And that's something I've had a lot of challenges with as in my journey as well, but... I just say, like, with cartoons, just let yourself free up. And you know, honestly, honest to God, if you have trouble drawing with a pencil, drawing on your digital program where you can edit every little thing, I really, really, I, I highly recommend drawing in pen. Like, just bring a pen with you, and every time there's some downtime, just find yourself a scrap of paper and draw. Try to draw things in pen because that that challenge is really healthy. Um, you, you can't erase, so you must um, think about, you know, you can't test your, you know, shapes in space that well. So you have to think about how the outline of those shapes in space would look and things. And you have to think about, you know, your line of action and stuff, like, without worrying about erasing. Um, so you do... 
do those exercises like um, gesture drawings and stuff, like little scribbles. Do tons of tiny scribbles of just like try to get some active things going. And I'm, I, I don't know if I'm off today or what, but it, um, right now I'm just my scribbles are not the most aesthetically pleasing, but it it's really low pressure like drawing in pen seems like it's really hard but like um you are free because you're allowed to make mistakes and you can just blame it on the pen i do that all the time i i post something i'm like yeah i messed up there but it's it's the pen <laughs> and yeah i mean it's obviously you know my own weakness as an artist but i'll fix it next time you know i know what i need to work on because i can't draw it in pen yet <laughs> But, I mean, like, just work on skeletons. I just don't even worry about elbows if it, it doesn't help you. Or... You don't need to always think in full detail about things. Like, that, that can come later. You just think about how your shapes are telling stories. I don't know how to draw. <laughs> what am I talking to you guys about? I don't know how to draw. Um, but yeah, I know that was a long um, rambling babble of incoherency, but I hope there's something in there that helps in any way, shape, or form. If you want something, like, I mean, honestly, guys, anytime, just just ask me the more specific the better um, I, I would be happy to offer my personal perspective with the full understanding that a I am not a master and B my way is definitely not the only or best way to do anything it's just I, I think a lot of you have potential to be way better than me it's just I, I would like to help you get there <laughs> So, um, I hope this helps, and, um, we'll see you all next time. Let me know if there's, um, any clarification you need, and I would be happy to help you. Uh, thank you! Maybe? Okay, thanks. <laughs>